what do you say we plant a little sweet corn today? All right, all right, all right. Here it is, the end of March, down here in South Georgia, zone 8B. And I would have normally already had my sweet corn planted. I usually like to aim to plant it around the middle of March, around the 15th or so. But this year we're planting a super sweet variety that needs some warmer soil temps. And so we waited a couple weeks till the soil warmed up a little more till we started getting some 80 degree days. And now we're gonna plant. I'll tell you a little bit more about that kind of soil temperature sensitivity with some of these super sweet varieties in a little bit. Now I know everybody's worried because there's supposed to be a real cold spell sweeping across, I know at least the Southeast of the United States. I don't know how uh, far North this thing is gonna go. But everybody's going to be getting this kind of rogue last cold spell. And I've checked the forecast and down here we're only supposed to get down to 39. And that's still a week or so away. So I've got plenty of time to get this corn in the ground and get it up and going before it's affected by that cold spell that's coming in about a week from now. So as you saw in the beginning of this video, we've already got our drip lines in place here where we'll be planting our corn on top of those drip lines here in a little bit. We use our FAD system, which stands for furrow, amend, and drip. We made a furrow, we amended it with some of our complete organic fertilizer. Then we lay that drip tape in the furrow and buried it. So we got seven rows here with a three foot spacing, which is what I normally do. You can go 30 inches and be just fine as well. I've even seen people plant these on double rows and then go three feet apart if you're trying to save some space. I like the 36 inch spacing pretty well. That's what we're doing here. Seven rows are all about 40 foot long. Should be a nice corn harvest and have plenty to put in the freezer. Now when you're planting corn, sweet corn, field corn, popcorn, whatever, because it's wind pollinated, you always want to try to plant it in as square of a plot as possible. Now I know that's not ideal for everybody, but just try to plant it in as square of a plot as you can. This plot right here is not perfectly square at all. It's about 25 by 40 but it, it's close enough. The last thing you wanna do is just plant, you know, one or two really long rows because you're probably not gonna get very good pollination. Now you can hand pollinate it if you're just doing like a little raised bed of it. But I always like to recommend at least planting three rows beside one another to make sure you get some good pollination and some good full ears of corn. Now I know a lot of people have their one sweet corn variety that they love and they won't plant nothing else in their mind. That's the best corn variety. Nothing else even compares. But for me, I usually plant a different variety every year. I've never really grown a sweet corn variety I didn't like. They're all good to me. I like, you know, some that taste a little more like corn and not quite as sweet. And I like the really sweet ones as well. I like them all, bicolor, white corn, yellow corn. I don't really have a, a huge preference. So I just always like to try new varieties and kind of see how they grow and compare them. So this year, or for at least for our first sweet corn planting, we're planting a variety called Yellowstone. Now on our road by row show, we've been over this a couple times, but there are three corn genes and we're not talking about gmo genes here that give a corn pest resistance or resistance to an herbicide we're just talking about sweetness genes basically so you've got your su gene you've got your se gene and you got your sh2 gene su is the standard gene that's your uh, varieties like silver queen some of those older varieties you got your se which is a lot of the more popular ones ambrosia peaches and cream stuff like that and then you got your sh2 which are your super sweet varieties and then you've also got some varieties that are a combination of those three kernel types those synergistic types like the triple sweets or the quad sweets we have have a combination of all three kernel types and then the one we're planting today is a kind of newer type out there and it's called an augmented super sweet so it has the super sweet kernels and the really tender se kernels so i've never grown one of these augmented super sweets really looking forward to it these things grow fast your days to maturity on this is 75 days so you're gonna be able to get this corn in just about two and a half months that's really really fast and we've got a really good germination on this yellowstone uh, sweet corn seed here 97 percent germination on that so it should come up really well for us 
This is a yellow corn, as the name suggests, yellow stone. It's been a, quite a while, a few years since I've grown a yellow sweet corn. I've been really digging the bicolor ones lately. I grew a white one called Avalon last year. But I think it's time for me to try a yellow sweet corn. So that's why we're going with the Yellowstone. But my opinion, you can't really go wrong with any sweet corn variety. The advantage to these really sweet ones is that they store much better. So when it comes harvest time, I've got a longer harvest window and I've also got a longer window for when I have to process this stuff, cut it up, freeze it, whatever. I don't have to do it you know, within a, a short three day window there, I've got about 10 days to play with. So that's why I do kind of lean towards the sweeter types just because I get a longer harvest window, longer processing window, and a little more leeway before I had to put all this stuff up in the freezer. So we're gonna use our Hoss garden seeder to plant these seven rows of sweet corn. But before we do that, we need to make sure we got the right seed plate for this particular variety. So whether you're using our Hoss Garden Seeder or another brand of Walk Behind Garden Seeder, there's no such thing as a one size fits all plate for corn, beans, or even peas for that matter. And that's because the seed size can vary so much from one variety to the next. So what we did is we made our seed plates out of what they call a machinable plastic here. So it's not a hard, thick plastic, but it's easy to drill and modify the hole size here and even the spacing so you can get it exactly like you want it and get the hole size right for whatever variety you're planting. Now this is our stock number four plate. This is how it comes when you order one of our garden seeders and this works. This hole size works for some varieties, doesn't work for others. For instance, if you're growing one of those SU, one of those older varieties like Silver Queen, those kernels are often too big for these holes. So you do need to take a drill and make those holes a little larger. For some varieties, it works perfect for. That's why we always have to check it before we plant to make sure our hole size is right. Otherwise, our cedar may jam on us or we maybe end up planting way too many seeds. This number six plate here is the one we use if we're planting field corn, but we also have to modify this one sometimes. If we're planting a big kernel variety like Hickory King field corn, those kernels are bigger than that hole there, so we need to make those holes larger as well so always be prepared to kind of check and modify if necessary now this plate here has the right spacing i want for my corn planting today so the way our spacing works on our cedar is you take 19 inches divided by the number of holes in the plate and get that gives you your seed spacing so 19 divided by four gives us approximately a four and a half inch spacing which is that's good with me i can thin them out later if i need to but because we're growing them on drip we can plant them pretty close. So I'm good with the spacing on here. Let's check the hole size and make sure it works with this Yellowstone corn we're going to be planting. Let me grab me a handful of seeds here. And you can see with this Yellowstone corn, and this is the case with all your super sweet varieties, they have these shrunken kernels. They're kind of caved in a little bit there. And that's what the SH in SH2 means. It's short for shrunken. So that's what your super sweet kernels look like. They look a good bit different than something like a silver queen kernel. Let's see if they fit within these holes here. So we're just gonna take some of our seeds, slide them in here. And we wanna make sure one seed fits in there comfortably. Plenty of room so it's not gonna get stuck. But we also wanna make sure there's not enough room for two seeds to get stuck in there. And that looks pretty good right there. And a good way to tell is if you can pull up that plate like that put it back down, plenty of room in there. So we should be good with this plate here. Now, in some cases, these holes may be too big and you may get some stacking in there or some doubles and you wanna take one of our blank plates and drill smaller holes. So always be prepared to modify if necessary, but it looks like this stock number four plate is gonna be perfect for us with this Yellowstone sweet corn here today. So let's put our seed plate in here, get it seated in there nicely then we'll do our spacer comb here and a brush and we'll secure all that with this wing nut if i can get it on there and just barely barely tighten just till we touch that plate there and put some seeds in here And 
And I'm going to set my depth for this sweet corn at about three quarters of an inch or so. Should be plenty deep enough to plant these little kernels here. Now I mentioned earlier that I'm planting later than normal because we are planting one of these super sweet types. And these corn types, whether it be a regular super sweet or an augmented super sweet like we're planting today, like a soil temp, at least around 60 for good germination. Your older varieties, your Silver Queen and even your SE varieties can be planted at soil temps around 55 usually. So we gotta wait for things to warm up a little bit more to plant these super sweet varieties. Now I don't have a soil temperature device, but I know if it's been being 85, 88 degrees out here the last few days, we ought to at least have a soil temp of 60 degrees. So we're gonna take our cedar here and we're gonna plant right on top of that buried drip tape there. So we'll just run the cedar right over the top of it where it's buried, plant right there, and we can keep that corn happy and fed that way. And we can plant on top of that drip tape because on our cedar we have these little disc furrow openers there. So they're not gonna cut the tape, they'll just roll right over it. Let's do it. All right, all right, all right. That didn't take long at all. Now we just need to get our excess seed out of here. So I'm gonna take this wing nut off right here. And I'm just gonna grab this whole piece here. And dump it back in my bag. Oh, spill a little bit, that'd be all right. And make sure there's none here stuck in this brush. Dump the rest of it out of there and just set that right there. I won't tighten that back down because I'll need to use it for something else besides corn here pretty soon. And this stuff will store good. I can put this in the refrigerator in these foil bags. This stuff will store for probably a couple years. But uh, if we really like it, we may plant some more of it this year. We'll just have to see. Now, if your climate allows for it, you can succession plant sweet corn. And we experimented with some of that last year. I planted once in March, I plant it again in May, and then we always plant a fall crop of sweet corn around the end of August, early September. I probably could have got one more crop in there as well between that May and September planting if I would have wanted to, but that was about all the corn we wanted to put up last year. If you're growing during the heat of summer, make sure you got good irrigation because those heat units make it grow a lot faster and you got to keep it watered or else you end up with some pretty pitiful corn ears. So, if you live in a warmer climate, you can certainly stagger the plantings and get several good rounds of sweet corn harvest throughout those warmer summer months. So let me know in the comments below what variety or varieties of sweet corn you're planting this year. Do you got one you just stick with and plant every year? Are you Are trying some new ones? If you've ever tried any of these augmented super sweets, definitely let me know. I'll put some links below to this Yellowstone sweet corn seed we planted today and our Hoss Garden Cedar. So you can get one of those or get put on a wait list if we're not in stock. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and ring that bell so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy this one, make sure to check out these other two sweet corn videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. We'll see you next time.